It was beautiful, thank you. And the words, grant them rest, Lamb of God, everlasting. Not only is God the almighty, powerful God who has authority to remake what is broken, he is also the God who cares, the God who is alongside us. He is near unto every broken heart. Having felt all of our pains, he grieves with us and warmly welcomes our tears and our fears. Let's sing together. Come, let us worship and bow. Let's bow our heads in prayer. 
we're going to use a psalm reference. So these are David's words. What a life is this, where trials and sorrows never cease, and where all things are full of snares and foes. For when one trial or temptation departs, another one takes its place. And even while the conflict rages, other trials arise, innumerable and unexpected. It is difficult to love life at times when it holds so much bitterness and is subject to so many sorrows and calamities. Right now, we mourn and bear our unhappy lot of grief, for many evils happen in this veil of sorrows, which often disturb, sadden, and darken our path. They often hinder and distract, entice and entangle us, so that we cannot approach you freely, nor enjoy the sweet embrace which you prepare for those who seek you. O oh, Jesus, brightness of eternal glory and comfort of the pilgrim soul, hear our cry and regard our utter desolation. If words fail us in your presence, let our silence speak to you. Come to us, Lord, poor and little as we are, and bring joy. Stretch out your hand and deliver us from our misery and pain. Come, Lord, for without you, no day or hour is complete. Sadness is our lot, and we feel like things that imprison us and load us with chains until you refresh us with the light of your presence. O oh, Heavenly Father, our hope and our eternal salvation. Amen. and sisters to this longest night of the year. Welcome to a night of worship that's a little bit different than what we're typically accustomed to. This is going to be a time where we allow sorrow and grief to be real and authentic in whatever that looks like for you. We have been through a lot this year. We have been through a lot for a really long time. Some things we're going through now, some things are fresh, some things have been years with us, but they're always with us. And so we want to allow this time and space of worship to allow that to be. We worship a God of hope and restoration, and oftentimes it's hard to just jump to that, especially in a season of Christmas and hope and joy when maybe we're feeling things that are not hopeful and joyful and Christmassy. And so we wanted to allow that space to worship, to grieve, to feel sorrow, um, maybe feel doubt, 
um, but allow that to authentically be um, because we worship the God who knows us complete inside and out, and we don't have to hide who we are or the feelings that we have in front of him or with one another. So we're going to be going through movements during this, this time together. Um, and as you came in, you were given some candles. You'll be invited a little bit later um, when you were ready at that time to come and light your candle from the Christ candle and uh, socially distant, clearly, and sit back down. You have a pen and you have paper, and that is for you and your eyes only. So whatever you feel, at any moment that you feel it, if you want to write or jot or doodle, it doesn't matter. That paper is yours. Uh, it goes with you. Um, the pen will take at the end, but whatever you feel like doing, that is for you. Um, we come before God, the knower of our hearts, the one who understands us in every ounce of the word, the one who dwells within us. and sorrows are painful. Sometimes they're very personal. The pain is happening to us and sometimes we name things we see in this world that just does not make sense in God's kingdom. Something's so wrong with the world that we feel the pain, the weariness, the anger, and the disappointment, and we align ourselves with a holy and good God who sees them too. It's not as though God hasn't seen our grief or sorrow. It's not that God doesn't know how much hurt and brokenness is in the world. He knows. Because he counts the hairs on our heads, he knows that there are fewer hairs today than yesterday as we pull our hair out over some of our frustrations. God knows already. When we invite him to turn his eyes toward our need, we find that his gaze is already on us. So during this next song, I'd like you to take the opportunity to write on your notepad, and you can write down what brings you down. What sorrow do you feel? And feel free to sing at any time during any of the songs. Time. 
Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Our request is coupled with an expectation. We ask God because we believe in God. We expect that God can and will do something. So during this next song, take the opportunity to write your requests to God. And again, feel free to join in singing whenever you'd like. I don't know where to go from here It all used to seem so clear I'm finding I can't do this on my own I don't know where to go from here As long as I know that you are near I'm done fighting I'm finally letting go I will trust in you You never failed before I will trust in you If there's a road I should walk Help me find it if I need to be still, give me peace for the moment, whatever you will, whatever you will, can you help me find it, can you help me find it? I'm giving you Doubt you give me grace for every step I've never been alone. Even when it hurts, you'll have your way. Even in the valley, I will say, with every breath, you never let me go. I will wait for you. Never been before. I will wait for you. There's a road I should walk, help me find it. If I need to be still, give me peace for the moment. Whatever you will, whatever you will, can you help me find it? Can you help me find it? I lift my empty head.
He has broken my teeth with gravel. He has trampled me in the dust. I have been deprived of peace. I have forgotten what prosperity is. So I say, my splendor is gone and all that I had hoped from the Lord. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them and my soul is downcast within me. Yet, this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. We have an opportunity, an uh, invitation. When you are ready, when there is space for you, I invite you to come and light your candle from the Christ candle, and you can return to your seat, and we're going to sing some more songs and reflect on some songs. But uh, take this opportunity again when you have a second, when you feel so moved, to light your candle from the Christ candle. Out of the depths I cry to you, in darkest places I will call, incline your ear to me anew, and hear my cry for mercy, Lord. Were you to count my sinful ways, how could I come before your throne? for you, I will wait for you on your word. I will rely, I will wait for you, surely wait for you till my soul is satisfied. So put your hope in God alone. Courage in his power to save Completely and forever one By Christ emerging from the grave His steadfast love has made a way And God himself has paid the price That all who trust in him today Find healing in his sacrifice. I will wait for you. I will wait for you on your word. I will rely. I will wait for you. Surely wait for you till my soul is satisfied. I will wait for you. I will wait for you. Though the storm and through the night.
Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is He who made us, and we are His. We are His people, the sheep of His pasture. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and His courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. This is the word of the Lord. Would you join me in prayer? Holy Spirit, on this longest night, on this space that we give to whatever feeling we feel. We lift it up to you. Knowing that there is no judgment in our feelings, that you understand us. As we read and heard, you know every hair on our head. You know our feelings before we even know and can express our feelings. Would this word, your word, your truth, be a peace upon our heavy hearts? Amen. When we read the Psalms, we get a glimpse into the past 
a glimpse into what a life with God looks like from the standpoint of the Israelites or whomever is writing that psalm. The ups, downs, the fears, the joys, the songs that they sing, all the emotional roller coasters that come with life, and yet so much more. Because psalms are about an authentic relationship with God in all its glory and splendor, fear and trembling, emotional roller coasters, anger, frustrations, and praises. So where does Psalm 100 fit? Why did I pick Psalm 100 for this night? When we look at this extremely short psalm, we first see that this is a psalm for giving grateful praise. Not just praise, not just joy, but giving grateful praise praise, as this psalm most likely would have been used in in a temple worship of praise to God. So while the sacrifice was being made, while the thankfulness was being offered up, this psalm and songs in general would have been sung because of what those sacrifices meant and, and did, not only for the people, but the relationship it showed that they have with their God. It was a way of giving thanks for what God did, for the acceptance of this gift of sacrifice, for the work God was doing in this relationship. So in in essence, this becomes an act of worship, eliciting joy and gratefulness for all that God has done for that individual as well as the people of God. The psalmist writes, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth, not just as you come to worship, but All the birds of the air, all the beasts of the field, the fish in the sea, because the Lord God made them all. He created them. He created the space that they live in. Every square inch of what we see, God's voice formed. It is God who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. We, if we declare that the Lord is our shepherd, then we declare that he is watchful and mindful of us, that he leads us and guides us by his staff and rod. Lush meadows stand around us, streams of living water flow freely before us. And that great shepherd invites us to rest and drink in him. But how? It seems easy to do when things are good and great and everything in life is working as we had planned and hoped. But what does that look like when things aren't good, when things aren't easy? How do you do that when someone dies? How do you do that when you're unable to say goodbye to that someone you love? How does one enter the gates of the Lord with thanksgiving when our hearts are heavy. Our feet don't seem to want to hold our weight. We can't even stand and it's barely, our knees are barely even holding us up. How are we supposed to find joy? How does one declare that the Lord is good and that his love endures forever, that he is faithful in the midst of sorrow? During this time of Advent, when we're told to be happy and hopeful, how does one do that when you've lost a job, when you're fighting to make ends meet, when you're simply grieving now? How are you to enter with thanksgiving when you feel lost, when you feel sad, when you're tired, and let's be honest, when you just don't want to? When the very last thing that you want to do is sing yet another happy song. The problem is that we have these images and understandings and ways that we feel and we are told what Thanksgiving must look like. We have emotions and thoughts of what proper worship in general looks like. We have been raised and churched to say that this is proper, this is not. And then life hits. And it hits at the most inopportune time. And now we're supposed to hide our sorrow, our grief, wear a mask, not let our honest feelings be honest. Because that's what we're supposed to do. 
And apparently it's better to fake it than to honestly be where we are. So we sing the happy songs. We put on a smile. We decorate with tinsel and lights and presents and cinnamony, cinnamony spicy smells that everybody expects us to do. All the while inside we're broken, we're shattered, feeling like there's no way anything could ever be put back together. Grief and sadness is what we want to feel, not joyful, hopeful, happy. Wanting to express our real emotions, it doesn't seem to fit with the way everybody else is around us. So all the things that help make this part of the year so bright and hopeful and Christmassy, really what they do is they make us hurt. And they make us sad. And that sadness is a never-ending, revolving door. And sometimes it comes maybe when December hits or when birthdays come for the ones that we miss. More often than not, those feelings just don't go away. We just package them neatly to the side. Because so much of our culture and society doesn't allow that honest space to be lived in. Most of you know that uh, I love music, playing it, singing it, experiencing it. Most of my family does too. And so when I read this, it's hard not to put music in with this psalm. The beautiful thing about music is that when we sing, it doesn't have to be joyful all the time. Especially when we sing to the Lord. It can be wherever you are, however you feel, the words that ever, would ever come to you. I think we oftentimes feel that songs of gratitude and gratefulness and thankfulness must be songs that are uplifting and joyful and encouraging to everybody. That they make our hearts joyous and, and move in this bouncy rhythm. But that isn't necessarily true. Songs unto the Lord come into moments where we understand who we are, what's going on in, around us. And we give praise unto our protector and provider and comforter and peace, our Lord and Savior. All the while understanding that our praise may or, not, may or may not change the feelings we have going on inside of us. This is why we sing songs of lament when we are in pain and grief. Those are songs that are sorrowful. Those are songs that are honest. Singing in those moments can be songs of joy and thanks still in a circumstance that we would rather not be in. But nowhere are we ever told that songs must be peppy and uplifting and always happy and declare that they are something separate than what we actually feel. Sing unto the Lord, the psalmist declares, a psalm of thanksgiving. Singing and doing so while we are in grief and sorrow allows us to express our feelings, set aside the merriment that is expected, and declare that we long for God in every expression of the thought. We long for His restoration. We long for His peace. We long for His hope. We long for the brokenness that we feel to go away. We long for joy to return. We long for Him to come and fix it all and take it all away. Those are songs of thanksgiving. I appreciate how one author writes that we are invited to remember that in the long, sometimes dark wait for redemption, God is faithful. And I think that's important for us to 
come to and sit with on this longest night of the year. That even here in all circumstances, in joy and grief and sadness and deflation, that we can give thanks to God. And we recognize that in our thanks, it looks and it feels different than something peppy and smiling and joyous in the moment we like it to be. Because right now we are honest and it doesn't feel that way. And so we're tired of faking it. We're tired of doing what everybody else wants us to do. We're tired of declaring the very thing that we are not right now. Giving thanks to the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, who not only made us and declares that we are His, as the psalmist declares, Paul writes in Ephesians 2.10 that we are created in Christ Jesus, which means that we become part of Him and for Him. And a major part of that is recognizing why Christ comes to begin with. To take away the sadness, to take away the grief, the despair, to remind us that there is hope and joy. And it will come eventually. It may not be today. It may not be tomorrow. But it becomes an opportunity for us to remember that joy does come. And sometimes the knowing of joy that will come is the very string that we hold to. Music is sung in reflection, in sadness, in hope, in grief, and all the emotions that can befall us. It can be an opportunity for thanksgiving if we allow the honest space to happen. During Christmas, we want to do the heralding, proclaiming the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a time of the year to find joy and peace in His salvation. The time of the year we are, where we are reminded in the exact reason Christ came to earth to begin with, to bring a song back into our hearts. To give us hope in the midst of pain and suffering. To redeem what was lost. A time of year that we know will change in about two to three months when our joy of birth comes to pain of death. But again, we find joy knowing because what that means and all that Christ has done for us. That there is hope beyond today. Psalm 100 is a good, good reminder that through it all, we are His. That He made us, that He sustains us, protects us, leads us, guides us through the good and the bad, the times of joy, the times of sorrow. That we can offer times of thanksgiving and praise all the while experiencing grief and sadness and depression. That's why funerals are so important. They remind us not only of who we are, but who God is. It's a moment to grieve what was lost and yet celebrate the life through Christ. So we come singing in the midst of sadness. Not because people tell us to. Not because it's what we must do during Christmas season. But we sing and give thanks in the midst of sadness because that's what we do when we acknowledge the Lord of life, the Redeemer and the Restorer. We sing with sorrow. We sing with grief. We sing through the pain and the tears as they stream down our cheeks. And yet in those feelings and emotions, we sing with hope that one day it'll all be taken away and love and laughter and life and no suffering or pain or darkness will ever enter again. But until that day should come, we offer up to God, to the one who restores and heals. We offer up our song of thanksgiving and praise, even through the flood of tears and the raw, unhealed, and open, wounded emotions.
brothers and sisters, this table is set for those who live into the promise of God. That his love never ends. That his grace extends beyond all things. That he came to bring hope, to restore, to heal, and to cleanse, and to offer life. So this table is set for those who need every ounce of who Christ is. His work then, his work to come, the work of the Holy Spirit, the love of our triune God. This table is set for those who draw upon the healing spirit to take us from this place of grief and sadness and brokenness and unite us with our Lord on high as we take this simple bread and juice, knowing that God's love and grace transcends all time and space and that this act of holy sacrament unifies us and breathes deeply into our lives. Congregation of Jesus Christ, the Lord has prepared his table for all who love him and trust him for their salvation. All who are truly sorry for their sins, who sincerely believe in the Lord Jesus as their Savior, and who desire to live in obedience to him as Lord, are invited to come with gladness to the table of the Lord. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his betrayal and arrest, he took bread, and when he gave thanks to God, he broke it and he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Brothers and sisters, take, eat, remember, and believe that the body of our Lord Jesus Christ was given for the complete forgiveness of all our sins. same way after the meal he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood whenever you do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for when you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he should come again brothers and sisters take drink remember and believe that the precious blood of our Lord and Jesus Christ was shed for the complete forgiveness of all our sins Father, we need you more than ever. There is so much pain and suffering and chaos in this world and in our own personal lives. We've lost loved ones, jobs, homes, and stability. 
We've lost ways of doing things this past year, friends, and peace. And we know that you are watching over all of us, that all that we are going through and have gone through is not unknown to you. We know that you restore all things unto you, and we long for that, Lord Jesus. And so until we can stand before you in glory, until you come again and put an end to the pain and suffering, Holy Spirit, settle upon our hearts and our minds. Give us a peace right now that allows us to finally take a deep breath without the tears, without the sorrow, without the pain and the suffering. We don't ask that our loved ones are forgotten from our memories, but we ask that the pain be less, that the tears don't sting as much, and that all our worries can be put to ease. So come, triune God. Come and be the peace and comfort we need on this day. this evening. We have all been through quite a bit, but to know that we are surrounded by brothers and sisters who want to be on this journey with us is encouraging. We're called to walk alongside each other, to be a comfort and peace. We do life together. To know that the feelings we have, the sadness and grief we experience is okay, and to know that we lift those up to God on high who redeems and restores us is the comfort and peace that we have during the times of grief and sorrow. Would you please rise? I want to send you with a blessing. May the God of peace the God of comfort, the God of eternally, eternity, rest upon your hearts. Amen. Amen.